Hey Gear Seekers, I'm Nick. I've got something very interesting to share with you today. A very exciting motherboard from Gigabyte. It's the Gigabyte WRX80 SU8 IPMI. It is a server slash workstation grade motherboard for Threadripper Pro. So we're gonna take a little bit of a closer look at this board. And just remember ladies and gents, our motherboard videos are not reviews. Let's jump right in. As usual with our motherboard videos, these videos are not reviews, they're just overviews so we can take a closer look at what comes in the box with this motherboard and what's physically on the board. Now, I have another video planned on our other channel, Kernel Control, where we're going to take a much deeper dive into this motherboard, but for now, let's see what's in the box and what's physically on the board. Let's jump in. Alright ladies and gents, let's check it out, the Gigabyte WRX80 SU8. Now this isn't a car, I know a lot of people are going to be like, hey! WRX, I get it. Yes, yes, I get it also. All right, let's get the motherboard out of the box and out of the way so we can take a closer look at all of the things that come with this board. And just a bit of a spoiler, there's not that much that comes with this board, basically because it's a server and workstation board. All right, what do we got first? First, we have four SATA or SATA cables for your 2.5 inch SSDs or your spinning rust drives. There's also an IO shield. Now, the reason why this is included in the box and not on the board is because of the design of the board. Most server motherboards will not have this integrated. It will be completely separate. There's also this Gigabyte warranty commitment card. This is the Australian version. It's probably be gonna be different in your region if you happen to purchase this board, but yeah, standard documentation here. There's also a disc for the drivers and all that stuff that comes with this motherboard. This actually might be useful for this motherboard, not like many other motherboards, but yeah, we'll we'll take a look at this disc and what's on it on kernel control. And there's this. Lastly, this is probably the most helpful thing for this motherboard, considering if you're using regular desktop motherboards, you may or may not know this, but the layout, even for things like the front panel I.O. connections are different. It is, it is standard, but it's a different type of standard. So you will need to use this if you don't quite know what all the jumpers and everything on the board does. So yeah, I think this is a great little reference guide. And to be honest, this is something that I will be using because yeah, there's a lot on this board physically and it may or may not confuse you, but hopefully you can get somewhat of an idea looking at this here. All right, let's uh, unsheath the WRX80 SU8 and take a closer look at all of the things on the board. And there's quite a lot to take a look at. We're not gonna cover absolutely everything in this video because we're gonna do all of the software stuff and the IPMI stuff over on Kernel Control, our second channel, go and subscribe to that. And yeah, let's take a look. First up, we've got the front panel audio header. There's two PWM fan connectors. There is a serial port header next to that. There's an IPMB header. There are two GPIO headers. There's a TPM header. There's a Thunderbolt header for an add-in card. There's a USB 2.0 header, a USB 3.0 port. Now, the reason why something like this would exist on a board like this is if you're using this for a hypervisor, you can run the hypervisor straight off a USB stick. And this is actually a very common use case for data center applications. And there's also two USB 3.0 headers. Below the chipset cooler, there is also a USB Type-C front panel header as well. There's a front panel header for all your lights and all your switches and everything to let you know your system's on and operational. There's a power switch, a reset button, and a BIOS flashing switch as well. There's four SATA or SATA ports for your 2.5 inch SSEs or your spinning rust drives. There's three mini SATS connectors that support both PCIe storage and SATA storage as well. There's the postcode LED screen. There's the PM bus header. There is an EPS power connector, a 24 pin power connector, and above that is another EPS power connector. On the top right hand side of the board, you'll notice there's also four more PWM fan connectors. This is for CPU fans, liquid cooling, and all of that kind of stuff, just depending on your use case, but traditionally for case fans. There's also another PWM fan header on the other side of the top RAM slots. If we take a look at the PCIe slots, now this is where these boards start to get very interesting. So if we're looking from left to right, 
All of the slots on this are obviously they're by 16 size slots. The second one from the bottom is a by 8 slot, but every other slot on this motherboard is a full by 16 slot, which is absolutely crazy. This board also supports things like AMD's Crossfire, it also supports SLI from Nvidia, and any type of multi-GPU technology, as well as full storage capability through all of these slots as well. It is chock full of PCIe expansion. This board features AMD's WRX80 chipset. The main difference here between TRX40 and WRX80 is this chipset supports eight channel memory. Because this is a server slash workstation board, it actually has its own, let's call it a GPU, but it's not actually, it's a graphics chip or a frame buffer. It's the A-Speed AST2500, and this allows video output without a GPU. So if you're having any type of data center deployment, typically you'll use VGA for management, and that's what this enables you to have. This board uses the SWRX8 socket, which is only compatible with Threadripper Pro chips and will support a total power draw of up to 280 watts. You'll notice this board has eight memory slots. This board actually can run up to eight channels of memory, not quad channel like traditional Threadripper, but eight channels in total with a total of one terabyte of RAM with both UDIMs and RDIMs. So registered ECC memory and regular ECC memory. Eight channel memory is unique to both Threadripper Pro and AMD's Epic platforms as well. I also wanted to mention something. If you're not familiar with this type of server slash workstation motherboard, the first thing you're probably noticing is the CPU socket compared to traditional Threadripper is rotated. The reason for this is traditionally, if this is being rack mounted, the cooler is oriented in a way that the airflow flows from the front of the system and exhausts out the back. So server racks have a hot side and a cold side. So what you're seeing is the air comes in from the cold side, which is the side that you're seeing with the 24 pin power connector, out the hot side, which is the IO side, and the air flows in a single direction. This also explains why the RAM modules are oriented that way to promote airflow. The Gigabyte WRX80 SU8 is also a different standard sized motherboard. So you have ATX, you have micro ATX and all that, and you've got EATX, which is a weird standard of its own, but this is an SSI CEB standard, so it is only slightly bigger than regular ATX. You do need to remove most of the center peg, so the one at the top, the one in the middle, and the one at the bottom to use this motherboard, but most of the others are the same. But traditionally, it's only about 30 millimeters larger, so it should fit in most cases, and it's technically also smaller than EATX. If we flip the motherboard over, it looks quite simple, and that's by design. It's supposed to be a very elegantly built motherboard, and that's basically what the backside of this PCB is showing us. There's M.2 slots on this board as well. There's two in total. There is one that is directly behind the mini SAS and SATA connectors, and there's one that is underneath the USB Type-C front panel header and the chipset itself. For rear I.O., we've got a VGA port for that A-Speed AST2500. There's also a serial port, which is not unusual for these types of motherboards. There's a USB Type-C port. There's also all USB 3.2 Gen 2. There's also two gigabit ethernet ports that can be used for the IAPMI module, which means it can be remotely managed. So you can do everything on the BIOS and everything remotely, if you don't know what that means. That's the easy way of me quickly breaking it down if you've not seen it before. There's also dual 10 gigabit ethernet built in and 7.1 digital surround sound with optical and SPDIF output. All right, ladies and gents, I hope you enjoyed this special look at the WRX80 SU8 from Gigabyte. Now, this is a Threadripper Pro motherboard. Now, this motherboard isn't compatible with regular Threadripper chips. It's got eight channel memory, and it's really geared towards workstation and professional use cases, or because of the IPMI, you can use it as a workstation. And I talked a little bit about this in the voiceover on the, that part of the video as well, but because it's got VGA as well, you can use it as a server without using a GPU. So for people who are trying to build a home server, probably not uh, an affordable solution. Bindi doesn't think so either. She's just passing through. Hi, Bindi. Bye, Bindi. Yeah. 
So yeah, it's definitely not for everyone, but I think this is just cool, which is the only reason why I decided to make a video about it. Me personally, I love seeing these type of advancements in technologies because with uh, Threadripper Pro, when they first announced it and it first came out, it was kind of a system integrator thing. So like Lenovo, I think HP made some workstations that featured these CPUs with this socket as well. And then AMD came out at the start of the year and said, hey, we're gonna do like off the shelf Threadripper Pro stuff so you don't have to buy it from a system integrator. And I think that right there is, is really cool because if that was, wasn't the case where like, I could only get it through to Lenovo or like one of those other system builders, I would never have been able to get my hands on one of these CPUs and motherboards ever. So I think this is this is pretty cool. Like me personally, I daily drive Threadripper for video editing. So everything you see that's edited on the channel is done on a Threadripper machine. Now, what we're gonna be using this for is not a secret. Uh, I always, kind of periodically upgrade my editing workstation. So this will eventually end up in my editing workstation with this chip here, which is the Threadripper Pro 3975WX, it's the 32 core. But for now, we're gonna do some uh, other content and builds and tests and stuff for Kernel Control, our open source and Linux based channel, because the people who will actually be really interested in this, other than enthusiasts who want the best of the best, are people who are Linux and open source enthusiasts. It's actually funny, I noticed one thing though. On the board that we received, it says IPMI server motherboard. And on Gigabyte's website, it says IPMI workstation motherboard. So somewhere in there, the wording's changed on the box, which I thought was odd. And I was like, hey, is this even the same board? But yes, it is exactly the same board. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed getting a bit of a look at something that we wouldn't traditionally cover because usually it's too expensive or it's made of unobtainium. But yeah, I, I love the fact that we get to look at this stuff every now and again. Ooh, this is the stuff that gets me excited because I'm like eight channel memory. Like it's just so overkill, but you know, I love overkill. And if you like Overkill and you like the music that you heard here, I make all the music, it's available on Patreon. If you wanna get early access to videos like this one right here, we're over on Float Plane. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm your boy Nick with Gear Seekers. You peak, we seek. And yeah, this video is not sponsored or anything. I just wanted to show you guys this board because otherwise I wouldn't have shown it at all on Gear Seekers. It was gonna be exclusively on kernel control, but I have a build coming with this in a very special case eventually, that I backed on Kickstarter, not Kickstarter, Indiegogo, that's the one, Indiegogo. <laughs> I always get them mixed up, but the June Case Pro, I backed the case like a long time ago and it's just about ready to ship. So hopefully cross our fingers that we're in the first batch of shipments that we get one, because I want to build a Hack Pro. I mean, maybe not even run Mac OS, but something like over the top in the June Case to show those Mac Pro users out there that, that you have options. <laughs> Anyways guys, thanks for watching. Oh, cinematic mode, do it. <laughs>